I'm with International Medical Advisory Board member, Dr. Colvin Kraft. May I call you Kobe? Absolutely, John. And uh, where does Kobe come from? Kobe was a nickname given to me by my older sister, Cheryl. She was 15 months older than me, and when she was young, she couldn't pronounce Coleman. And Kobe is what came out, and it has stuck ever since. And anybody that knows me or any of my friends uh, always call me Kobe. I, um, my parents don't even call me Coleman. They call me Kobe also. Well, I feel privileged to be able to call you Kobe, so I'll ask you a question now. Like, like a number of your, your fellow board members, you have fantastic experience in refractive surgery. And um, tell us a bit about your, your own practice, which is a few thousand miles from here. My practice is located in the heart of Chicago, in the downtown area and we specialize in refractive surgery and cataract surgery with IOLs. I practice with, I'm a second generation ophthalmologist. I practice with my father, my older sister, and um, I started out, in, originally was invited to Majorca. My first time here was in 2007 when Dr. Steve Schellhorn uh, was the organizing a educational meeting for the doctors of Optical Express and he invited me to present some of my uh, clinical experience uh, results of some studies that I participated in. And I guess I was, did a pretty good job because I've been, this is my fourth time here now. So Kobe, it's great to hear that it's, it's a family practice. So how, how does that work between you and your, your, your father and your, your sister? Well, it's an unusual family business to say the least. Uh, my father's obviously had a great influence in my life um, growing up as well as my older sister and he, he's practicing with him and watching him practice over the years. Um, what we've tried to continue for the last uh, number of years is um, continue to be involved in um, um, his passion and now my passion, which is um, refractive surgery and cataract and IOL, uh, IOL surgery. But 80% of my practice is devoted to the refractive uh, aspect of the practice and about 20% is the cataract and IOLs. So today um, I perform probably over 40,000 laser vision correction procedures and about 8,000 uh, cataract IOL procedures. And over the last 20 years I've participated in numerous US FDA clinical trials and today I continue to participate in a number of uh, US FDA clinical trials mostly involving refractive surgery and some IOL surgery also. I was the principal investigator in the original FDA US clinical trial sponsored by the Visex Corporation, which is now part of AMO. And I am the only investigator that continues from the original team that continues to be an investigator uh, over uh, almost 25 years later and continue to be involved in these FDA clinical trials. So you actually made part of Visex history? Indeed. It's nice knowing that uh, I've endured multiple changes in the company and one of the things that I'm proud of is that um, in 2000 um, I performed the first uh, US FDA sponsored uh, custom view treatments and it was so early in the game then for custom view treatments that our team had to crunch the uh, treatment algorithms manually with spreadsheets. And it was, um, I remember the first day very well and how each patient had to be, uh, the treatment tables had to be manually calculated for each patient. Now we know that the Craft Eye Institute is a family institution and that was pretty much set in stone from an early age, wasn't it? It, it, it indeed was, John. When I was eight years old, it w I would remember playing outside on a Saturday afternoon and my mother came outside and said, we're uh, getting the car. And I said, where are we going? She says, we're going downtown to see your father. And uh, what she didn't tell me was that uh, I was going to watch my first uh, eye surgery. And I remember uh, vividly um, being snuck into the back of the hospital, uh, then putting some adult scrubs on me, uh, rolling up the pants and the, uh, the sleeves to make it fit. And I watched my first corneal transplant at the age of eight. And at that point, um, I guess some people said I was hooked, or at least er early brainwashing, to say the least. And um, I've loved this uh, profession ever since. So you were born, raised, live, and now practice in Chicago? Yeah, my roots are deep in Chicago. And I am married to my wife, Julie. I have three 
great children, Ariel, Noah, and Liza. And I enjoy working and living in Chicago. It's a great place to work, and my roots are deep, and uh, I plan to continue to work in there and practice there for a long time. One of my uh, other passions that my ophthalmology practice has afforded me is uh, being the team ophthalmologist for the Chicago Bears. And by being the team ophthalmologist, I am responsible for any uh, ophthalmic issues or problems or whether or not the players need uh, LASIK surgery. And right now I'm in my 16th season doing this uh, uh, for this team, and it's uh, really a, a wonderful experience. Sounds like a real labor of love. But what do you do for Kobe Craft time? Um, besides work, uh, which uh, encompasses a great deal of my time, I've been an avid endurance athlete for the last 45 years. I've run multiple marathons, uh, lots of cycling, some skiing, and uh, staying very athletic and trying to be fit uh, to live a healthy life. How would you describe your personal contribution to the International Medical Advisory Board? What, well, what part do you play in that? You know, the IMAB has developed into an outstanding group that objectively evaluates clinical outcomes produced in a corporate setting. I am not aware of any other refractive provider in the world that comes even close to making the vast investment in time and money with a single-minded focus providing better patient outcomes. You know, by critically evaluating the data, the ultimate outcome is that we are able to deliver better results and better patient care. And that's what we all are all striving for, and it gives me great pleasure that I'm able to participate in this with this group. Taking a bit of a look into the future, where, where do you see laser vision correction and natural lens replacement going? Well, laser vision correction over the next five to ten years, I feel, will still be the dominant player in delivering vision correction around the world. And, however, uh, as IOL technology improves and as our experience in treating uh, a wide range of patients improves, the IOL, the percentage of patients treated with IOLs will probably increase. And I think we've demonstrated that by evaluating our data with Optical Express. That the number of I, the percentage of IOLs being done over the last seven years has increased. However, the strong, maybe to use the word, the 900 pound gorilla is still um, laser vision correction, and I think that's going to continue for uh, quite a long time. And where, where does Kobe Craft fit into all of this? I've really enjoyed being part of the uh, Medical Advisory Board of Optical Express. In addition to contributing uh, my knowledge and expertise, I have learned a tremendous amount from my other colleagues on the uh, MAB, and it's really changed the way that I have practiced in Chicago. Um, I bring every time I finish an IMAB meeting, I bring home new information that allows me to provide better care for me, for my patients, 3,000 miles away from here. And so I hope we will be able to continue to do this long into the future. Kobe Craft, thank you. Thank you, John.